Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Conil Cosmo and this video is the first of a series called C for Python programmers and the goal is uh, very straightforward. It's to learn the C language from scratch, assuming that you have some kind of background experience uh, with Python. Thanks to this experience that uh, you have, we won't uh, like uh, spend too much time on stuff which are common to all programming languages such as uh, variable, loops, and things like that, but we will directly delve into what are the main fundamental differences between C and Python. So, before we start, um, you might uh, ask uh, within yourself, like, uh, yes, but why would I learn C if I know Python? And so I prepared uh, my little PowerPoint to answer that question, hopefully. So, why learn C in 2020? So, the first uh, reason which is the most valid to me is uh, that if you're there, is, it means that somewhere inside of you there is a bit of curiosity or desire to learn C, and I think that's mainly the reason that we... Uh, uh, get you the farther in, 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 in learning C is just to follow your curiosity. So that's a very good reason for me. But more concretely, uh, first performances. Like uh, it's common to say that the same code written in C versus Python will go 100 times uh, faster. And that's, uh, that's uh, a, a reason why you see is uh, widely in use still today. Uh, in fact, it's even the most popular industry language. If you look at the Tiobi uh, 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 ranking of language, we see that C it ranks first, and uh, and uh, it always has been like either first or second. And and the reason is really because uh, since C is way closer to uh, hardware and the, the inside of your machine than a language for Python. Um, you, it enables you to do a lot more things uh, that will get you uh, more performance, performances and in industry level uh, performances. Uh, linked to all that, uh, a good goal is that C will allow you to understand computers at a lower level. Uh, basically, anything at a low level in a computer is written in C. You take, uh, if it's not written in assembly, it's written in C because C is kind of the first language above assembly that human can uh, read. So. For instance, uh, uh, Mac OS, Windows, Linux, Android, iOS, all these software are coded in C. Even Python, like the common Python implementation, is written in C. So uh, the reason behind is because, uh, again, since you're so close to uh, low-level consideration, you get a really good understanding of, uh, uh, in real life, how a computer uh, works. Whereas in Python, a lot of things are hidden and put behind the scenes, such as the memory management, uh, for instance. Five, uh, if you're good at C, I can assure you that you'll be better at almost any other language. And that's because C has had a, 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 an immense impact on the development of other uh, languages. And a lot of languages uh, came in order to fix a problem of C, we can say, or they, they propose features to fix some problem of C. But it's not that C has problems, is that in C, the main problem is you, it's the programmer, because the C language is very compact, very self-contained, and offers absolutely no safeguards. So uh, a C programmer needs to be its own safeguard all the time. And it's by understanding this, that uh, uh, it's, it becomes way easier to understand all the features that have been uh, uh, inserted in other languages, that C++, Java, and, or uh, uh, Rust, or, any uh, uh, language you can name and uh, instead of seeing these features are uh, heavy and cumbersome uh, you'll really understand why they were introduced and, and what, what they are trying to solve. Finally, uh, interoperability it means that uh, it's very easy to call C program C code from kind of any language. We'll see for instance how to call uh, C functions from Python. Uh, and a good example is NumPy, uh, which is often used by uh, Python programmers. The whole NumPy library relies on routines which are written either in Fortran or C. But the main idea here is that it's very easy from a Python program to call some C code. So when you have something that requires performance, you can write it in C and still have access to it in Python. And finally, uh, yeah, in C, uh, you'll be able to uh, code stuff which are related to hardware and embedded systems. If you ever wanted to interact with uh, some kind of non-standard peripheric or control a robot or do things like that, it's uh, very likely that you, you, you'll need C. So that's kind of the, the reason 
uh, that we can uh, mention uh, when we talk about while learning C. And uh, I think uh, the best is just to start uh, right now. So to get set up with C, my main recommendation is for you to get a uh, standard uh, text editor with syntax coloring. Here I'm using uh, Sublime Text. Uh, I'll put in the description of the video other uh, uh, editors that you can use. And together with uh, simply uh, a compiler. So here I use GCC and I just type GCC main.c and it compiles the program and we can see here it creates a.out which is the program and says uh, hello world. So uh, I also put in the description uh, uh, how to get started with compilers if you're on Windows, uh, Mac OS uh, or Linux. But it's ba basically it makes the whole process, uh, the whole setup very simple, just a text editor and uh, access to a compiler. So here we see the first big difference between uh, C and Python is that uh, C is a compiled language. It means that we have this intermediary here, the, here, the compiler, I use GCC, and uh, which is going to read your code and translate it into, uh, uh, into machine code. And in fact, it translates it, but it also does a lot of optimization. So your code runs uh, faster than what you might have uh, expected when you wrote it. So uh, then if we look at this hello world example, but it's pretty standard C, it starts with uh, these include directives. So the sharp uh, in C it's not for comments like in Python. Uh, the comments say go like this, one line comment, multi line comments. And um, the, the sharp, it, it means it's used for pre-processing instructions. So pre-processing instructions, it's instructions that are not really uh, directly in the C language, but that are understood by the compiler, which is going to do something with them before it compiles your code. Here, for example, the include function, the include uh, instruction, it simply takes the content of this file and prepends it, like puts it before your program. And we need this file because it contains the definitions of uh, uh, input output functions. It's standard input output. For instance, the printf function, which uh, is used for to output to the terminal. And the dot h will um, cover that in more details uh, later on. But basically, it's a header file, so it's a file that contains definition of functions, but not necessarily their implementation. All right, then. Another difference with Python, we have this uh, main function here. So we need this uh, main entry point uh, that is uh, by default in any C program. And we we'll see that the scope, we see that the scope of this function is defined by curly brackets. Uh, the indentation doesn't matter at all. We we'll see that when I do this, it still compiles. Also, something that will make things not compile is if we remove this semicolon, something that we often do when we learn C. So any instruction, uh, which is a function call or a variable assignment needs to end with a semicolon, but uh, don't worry, the compiler will tell you when you forget it. Uh, then this function call, it looks pretty much like the print function uh, in Python, expect, except that uh, there is no uh, return line by default in, uh, in C, like in, not like in Python, so you need to put the special character backslash n, which creates a new line. Because if you do two different calls to print, you'll see that it won't create a new line for you. So you need this backslash n to have a new line. Okay, the last thing I want to cover in this video is uh, this return here. We could say like, but why do we need our main function to return something? And historically, well, first, it's not uh, completely necessary. Here you can go to void, which means returns nothing and it will be fine. But uh, historically, this uh, return value, so this return code, which is an integer, it's used uh, by the program which is calling your program. Here I'm using uh, a shell to call my program, and the shell will be able to, to know this value. For instance, if I return anything else than zero, that will be interpreted as an error. You see here I have a, a red arrow. Uh, it means that there was an error. And if you don't have a red arrow in your terminal because you're using something else, you can do the, the following test, which is very simple. You do the name of your program and let's say echo hello. So the behavior of this uh, operator in bash is that it will uh, execute what's on the right if and only if what's on the left returned uh, zero. So here you see, we don't see hello, but if we do return zero, and we compile, we see this hello. This hello was uh, returned by bash because uh, bash uh, has seen that our program returned zero, which means like everything went fine. So 
Long story short, this return value is used when you want to integrate your program in, in a wider scale of things with the scripts that encode it. And so this return value can uh, uh, say to the, to the parent whether or not things went all right, like uh, did the task succeed or not. But uh, for the, this whole series of video, uh, return zero will be just fine. So thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, don't hesitate yet to give any questions or suggestions in the comments. Also subscribe to get uh, access to and notified for the next video in this series. And until then, bye-bye. Uh,